Hello, I'm Richard Lund from Los Angeles. I began my channel with information about the Native American fruit, the pawpaw. Scientific name, Asimina triloba. From there came a little humor on a Highway 61 filling station, and then some other stuff. I guess my interests range widely. Feel free to subscribe and comment. Please be kind in your choice of words. Perhaps you've heard about the Fasting Mimicking Diet, or FMD, and the work of Dr. Walter Longo. His teams have been doing some significant work with this approach, and Walter Longo has given many interviews about it. Maybe you were thinking that you should try it. I certainly was. Next, I looked at the price for the excellent products that his company was offering, and the price per month was too much for my budget. That may be true for many today. So what did I do? <laughs> Save up or plunge ahead? I decided that I could attempt to meet the published structure with readily available foods and see what happened. But before we go any further, let me remind you that I'm not a physician and I'm not offering medical advice. Just a few ideas about why I chose what I did and how I felt while I did it. If you're sick, see a doctor. Perhaps you'll find one who knows how to help you with food and lifestyle choices, as well as the best medicines. My understanding is that Dr. Longo set out a specific mix of proteins, carbs, and fats, as well as a total calorie count per day. Snacks were included, and suggestions for beverages, and a mystery drink from diluting glycerin and water. That one was not something I could fix right now. But the basic calorie count and the mix of ingredients, something I thought I could handle. Longo's published materials gave the general plan for a five-day diet that offered about 1,100 calories on day one, about 725 calories on days two through five. The general mix of nutrients was about 10% of calories from protein, 45% of calories from fat, and 45% of calories from carbohydrates. He provided a nut bar with a few sweeteners for breakfast and soups with crackers for the noon and evening meals. Some other things given were snacks of green olives and a couple of chocolate nut bars. He included herbal teas and the glycerin for dilution based on body weight. People using his program were provided educational materials, daily emails detailing guidance on what to expect, and a resource for talking to a registered nurse with one's questions. As well as the food, some supplements were also provided. All the food provided was plant-based. I ended up going ahead with my redneck plan, not making perfect the enemy of the good. I can see now where I can make some adjustments for my next time. So here's the breakdown of my food choices. For all breakfasts, I had one quarter cup of walnuts. I also made an herbal tea, often American ginseng, sometimes mixed with hibiscus. For days one, three, and five, I included a serving of a soup from Dr. McDougall's Right Foods called Organic Quinoa Vegetable for both lunch and dinner. For the other days, I had his organic tomato soup, again splitting the package into two meals. To each lunch and dinner, I had one crisp bread from Norway, sold by Trader Joe's. The cracker-like bread had a lot of seeds and fulfilled the provision of healthy fats and some fiber. I bought a jar of sliced green olives and had a serving as a snack one or two times per day as needed. I also added on three mornings a serving of one quarter cup of cooked spinach topped with one tablespoon of nutritional yeast for the extra B vitamins. That added a few calories and some protein. I also added a small serving of about a quarter of a cup of canned jackfruit with lunches for the last three days, if I remember correctly. I drank water, herbal teas, black decaf coffee, that's one cup per day, and some herbal tinctures of green tea or milk thistle because they were available in glycerin. The weather was mild and my exercise was minimal. I did some walking as I went on my daily errands, but with no particular program. 
I went to bed early most nights, did not sleep well some nights, and listened to more video interviews to encourage myself to keep with it. I'm writing this several days after finishing. I've decided I will try it again next month. It was a fairly difficult mission, but not impossible. I would not want to have a busy schedule for my next segment. I also added a one-hour session with a far infrared device called a hothouse from Nikon each day. I used the semi-cylindrical device over my thorax and upper abdomen each time. That's, that's this area here. I believe the explanation of why I would do this program to other places and times. I'm sure that as the viewer explores, she or he will figure out just how this calorie-restricted fast could affect their own health. The video that I shot as I went through the five days is included after this one, just presented as it happened. I hope that I can help you get an idea of what it was like. Next time, I see that I need to adjust my protein intake downward a bit. I will change my nuts to macadamia nuts or pecans for lower protein and higher monosaturated fats. I will bring in a nutraceutical like Nutristem Cardio or Nutristem Active and figure out how to use the glycerin in water to increase my carbs a little. Dr. Longo explains this in, in more detail in his patent filing. Quote, the diet can contain 12 to 25 grams of glycerol per day on days two through five, closed quote. My body weight at the beginning, 221 pounds. My body weight morning of day six, 212 and a half pounds. My body weight returned to a range of about 215 to 217 pounds. Please do not begin this program or any other revision in what you're eating if you have diabetes insulin resistance, cardiac disease, or if you're pregnant or nursing without making a visit to your doctor to discuss it. Here's my breakdown of the redneck menu. Remember that I plan to make some changes next time. The menu in detail is shown next.